everyone. I'm sorry I'm a little late. It has been a day. So um, I have a ton of notes, y'all. I have, I think, six pages. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. But I just wanted to tell every, or ask everyone, um, if y'all can pray for Crystal, um, and Stacey, I hope it's okay, but um, Crystal just lost her um, sister-in-law. All of a sudden, she was 51, and she, um, hey, Stacy, I hope it's okay. I'm going to share this a little, Stacy. Um, but Crystal lost her, her sister-in-law, like, very sudden. So she had told me she wasn't going to be able to make it today and everything. So if y'all can just pray for her. And I know, Stacy, you just lost your brother. I hope it's okay that I shared that. Um, and y'all just be praying for both Crystal and Stacy. Um, I just, um, it's just really sad. And um, I know Crystal, it was very sudden, and um, they were not expecting it at all. So if, uh, we're going to go ahead and pray us in, and I'm going to pray for them as well. Lord, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the time to get together. Lord, I thank you for this group. Um, and Lord, I thank you that we can pray for one another. Lord, I pray for Stacy and Crystal both as they just mourn the loss of um their loved ones, Lord. Lord, we know that you mourn with those who mourn, and you rejoice with, with those who rejoice, Lord. And and Lord, I just keep on thinking of when we went over when Jesus, or whenever you were on this earth, and how um, Lazarus, whenever he died, you wept, because you know the sorrow, Lord. And we just ask that you will comfort and um, be the healer and the comforter, Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to just come down and, and just be with them, Lord, and allow them to just feel your presence and your peace whenever the times get just so hard of loss, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that you're a God that has already gone before us, Lord, in this. And and Lord, we just thank you for the God that you are, that you are relational, that you want to be there for us, and you want us to come to you in the hard times, Lord. We thank you for your word, and please be with me as I um, go through it. Lord, this is such a hard, hard chapter, and Lord, um, I just ask that you would just guide me. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, y'all. I'm so glad. Hey, Sandy. Hey, Stacy. Um, so I'm glad y'all joined me. I'm going to tell y'all this is crazy, but I have had some weird stuff going on with preparation for like this study. So I don't know what what God is going to do in the midst of this, and I don't know if it's just spiritual warfare or what it is. But um, I actually did this lesson, and I did not save it. I never save my lessons until I'm done. Um, that way I know I'm done, and then I print it, and then I save it. I've always done that for 19 chapters now, John, Ruth, 4, and all the four Gospels. I've done it like that this whole time. Well, whenever I did it this time, I was almost done. I had to finish up. I was going to finish up this morning. I was finished up on Thursday morning to kind of go through, and it didn't save. So I had to redo the whole study. So I don't know what happened there, and I was kind of – last night, whenever I went to go find it, I was kind of discouraged. I just told my husband, I just – I was just really discouraged, but I was just like, you know what? God obviously has a plan. And so I just had to trust in him and trust in there that whatever I had in my last lesson, I had no idea if there was just something that y'all needed to hear in this. I was looking at it fresh because I did remember it. And this was so cool because God is so good. Whenever I went back and redid this, I was just like, oh my goodness, I didn't see that before. So God is so good in everything, even in the midst of craziness. I'm Stacy, the priest read from John during my brother's service. Oh, isn't that crazy, Stacey? You were probably like, I can go tell you some stuff on John. <laughs> like, um, but And that's comforting, too, isn't it, Stacey? Just knowing that God just had that set aside, that verse, that scripture set aside for you, just to show you his, he's real and he's in the midst. Um, and I just think of like how we just did, um, uh, I think it was a few chapters ago, when we talked about death and everything. So um, it's just, it's just, it's so sad. Um but I do pray, and I have been praying um, definitely for you, Stacey, and I'll pray for Crystal as well um, continually. Okay, we're going to dive into John 19 because there's so much here, y'all. I just do not. I'm going to hope I can stay in that 45-minute time frame. But if I don't, I'll just kind of continue next week. Okay, so verses 1 through 4. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers also twisted together a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and threw a purple robe around him. And they repeatedly came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews, and were slapping his face. Pilate went outside again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him outside to you to let you know I find no grounds for charging him. Okay, so the flogging, or it's, your version may say scourging. It, it's the same thing. Pilate gave the order, so Jesus was scourged according to Roman practice. The blows came from a whip. I don't know if y'all have ever seen this. Actually, um, oh. I had a picture of this, but I don't know if I did. I'll show it to you next week if I have a picture of this. I may actually have a picture of this when we're in Israel. 
Um, but I'm going to show some Israel pictures, y'all. This is going to be crazy because I actually, I just can't wait to show you the pictures. Um, but there is, so this is a whip. It was a leather strand, each having sharp pieces of bone and metals at the end. Okay. Can y'all imagine getting whipped? But he got whipped so much that his, his, the, it reduced the back to raw flesh. And it was not unusual for a criminal to die from a scourging even before crucifixion. So this is what they did to Jesus. Like, so I can't begin to fathom. Like, I just, I can't imagine this. I mean, Jesus was innocent for one, and he was perfect. And he went through all of this. Now, remember, these were the people that were just praising him weeks ago, or I guess days ago, <laughs> weeks ago for us, but days before that. These people were praising him, but then now they're saying crucify him. It is so crazy to me. And yet Jesus still did this. He still endured this for us, for love. So I thought it was fitting that today is Valentine's Day. And y'all, there's no greater love than this. Like we get to see what perfect love is. Um, hey, Kim, I'm so glad you joined. Crystal, you're here. I just told everybody you may not be here. Um, and so and we, we're definitely praying for you, Crystal, for sure. Um, so this this to me, I you know, I told you, I almost was so discouraged last night. I almost didn't do the lesson today because I was just like, oh, I'm going to have to find time and everything. But then I just thought, man, Valentine's Day, it is love. And we, there's no, like, whatever I have to do, I'm just going to put aside because I need to do the lesson. So I just thought it was just really cool because we get to see the perfect love. Um, and so verses two, the crown of thorns represented a mock crown, um, ridiculing Jesus messiahship. The thorns would sink into his skull, bloodying and distorting his face. The purple robe represented a mock royal robe. Purple was imperial color. So we can go back to um, Matthew 27, 28 and Mark 15, 17. Um, and so the soldiers also struck him with their hands, beating and mocking Jesus simply to gratify cruelty and wickedness. Y'all, this is just, it just, it gives me chills. I just had so many chills last night doing this because as much as sometimes I feel like, and tell me if, if this happens to y'all, but sometimes at Easter time, I, it's, and this is, this is so bad, y'all, and I'm just so guilty of this. So I'm just gonna be real right now. Sometimes at Easter, I'm just like, okay, Jesus died on the cross and rose three days later. And it's just like, we've just grown accustomed. Like I've been a Christian for 20 years now and, or 20, almost 21 years. Um, my oldest is about turned 21. That's how I know. Um, and so I, sometimes it's like, I don't appreciate it because as a Christian for this long, it's just like, yeah, we know Jesus died on the cross, but it's like, let it ponder and sit in your heart what he has gone through. And, um, Y'all, this is just like, it, it gives me chills to think that they were mocking Jesus. Like, it angers me because, the, like, I have a sense of justice in me that I just always feel like there has to be justice done. And it just, it angers me. But yet, yeah, Jesus still chose at any moment, y'all, we're going to see this all throughout this chapter. At any moment, he could have sent down the angels and he could have destroyed everybody. But yet, yeah, he chose to do this for the love. Like, so don't ever question God's love. Don't ever question God's love for you. Because if you get anything from this lesson, especially on Valentine's Day, like how fitting God loves you. Like this is so cool. And so verse four, it has been suggested that Pilate wanted to help Jesus, hoping that the mob would be satisfied with the scourging. Pilate made five, several attempts to release our Lord. As we learn from, if you go to Luke 23, 4, Luke 23, 15, 20, or 23, 20, and 23, 22 in Luke. And then John 19, 4, 12, and 3, 13. So like, Pilate didn't want to do this, and we'll see why in just a minute, but I mean, you could tell he just needed a backbone. Um, so verses five through seven, then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, here is the man. When the chief priest and the temple police saw him, they shouted, crucify, crucify. Pilate responded, take him and crucify him yourself, for I find no grounds for charging him. We have a law, the Jews replied to him, and according to the law, he must die because he made himself the son of God. So verses five, here is the man, conveys a sense of look at the poor fellow. In, the, in his mock regal clothes, Jesus made a heart-trending sight. In the context of John's gospel, the statement might also highlight Jesus' humanity and invoke mess messianic passages such as Zechariah um, 6.12. So I'm going to go ahead and read Zechariah 6.12. This is a vital, uh, like just a vital verse that we need to remember all throughout John chapter 19, which is you are to tell him, this is what the Lord of hosts says. Here is a man whose name is 
branch. He will branch out from his place and build the Lord's temple. Okay, this is so prophetic, y'all, because we're going to see this in the next couple of chapters in John. Um, y'all, this is so, this is, like, as hard as it is to know what Jesus, um, what Jesus went through, this is so hard, but, y'all, this is so cool in such a way. Like, it's just so amazing to me. Hey, Cindy, I'm so glad you found us. Oh, Christy, we're so glad you came. Um, so, verses 7 if you go on 19 verse 7, the Jews comment may refer to Leviticus 24, 16, which says, whoever blasphemy the name of Yahweh is to be put to death. So on Pharisees' defense, they have this verse, and they're saying, he blasphemy God. He said he was God. He said, remember, this is the Pharisees' whole reason why they're doing this is because Jesus said that he is God. This is so countercultural to what they're used to. And so, um, so we just have to see that. Um, there, we can we can see a little bit, but it's like, I mean, hello, he just like fed all the people, he did all these miracles, and, and yet again, we're going to see at the end of this chapter so much prophecy from the Old Testament that they knew. Um, so before we read the next section, 8 through 11, um, if we look at Matthew 27, 19, let this sink in, because this happened right before this next session happened. If you go to Matthew 27, 19, it says, while he was sitting on the judge's bench, his wife sent word to him, this is Pilate, um, have nothing to do with the righteous man, for today I've suffered terribly in a dream because of him. So remember, she, so here she is, she's coming to Pilate, and she's saying, okay, look, this is, you know, and so Pilate has this in the back of his mind, so you have to remember that. I love how the four Gospels all are like a glove, and they just all come together, and they're just so cool. Um, it's just so amazing how, like, I'm just so sad because, People don't believe in this, and it's just so cool to see this. So then we look at verse 8, and it brings to a different light. So, I mean, so remember this, okay? So when Pilate heard this statement, he was more afraid than ever. He went back into the headquarters and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus did not give him an answer. So Pilate said to him, you're not talking to me. Don't you know that I have the authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? You would have no authority over me at all, Jesus answered him. If it hadn't been given you, or sorry, if it hadn't been given you from above, this is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Oh my goodness, I love eleven. I love this is like one of my favorite Jesus verses. Like um, Stacy, I said I dropped the mic first. I mean, come on, y'all. I mean, like, is it not Stacy? Like, like if it wasn't, I can do anything. I have authority over you. You just don't know it yet. Like they think that. Oh, y'all. So it's like at any moment, Jesus could have called down the angels to save him at this point. Jesus is saying that he is the one who has put everyone in place for this to you, to happen. Yet it's crazy because all of the people actually thought that they were the ones in control. You know, I think sometimes I think I am in control. Yet I need to be reminded of this. Only God is the one in control of everything. This is comforting me as well, but we are not in control of anything. God is, so that it takes all the pressure off of us. And I think through all of John, all I see is trust and obey. So I know that we're going through hardships, and I know, y'all, there is just, there's no, I mean, like, we can't always understand God's ways. We just can't. Um, and, like, I just can't imagine, like, how the disciples felt right now. Like, they're seeing Jesus, and, you know, Peter just, denied Jesus and yet then now they're seeing him being scourged and they're seeing all of this happen to somebody who they are like poured their three and a half years into and it's like it doesn't make sense right I mean can you imagine what the disciples felt right now it doesn't make sense like here he fed all these people what happened he said he was God and yet he's going through all this pain and suffering and like y'all I mean how many of you have felt that way at times where you just don't understand and you don't, and I know Stacy and Crystal, y'all both have that right now. And it's just like, we can't understand. But the one thing Jesus says is trust. He says, trust, he is Lord. He is in control and obey. Do what his word says. All that to say, Jesus at any moment could have left and been spared. Yet he knew the suffering and he knew he had to endure it because he loves us that much. That is the God that we serve. Is he not worthy of our praise? Is he not worthy of our sacrifice. He is worthy of all of that. Um, it's just, oh, man, y'all, I have chills. Just, It's just so, God's word is so good. 
Verse eight, Pilate was more afraid than ever. Earlier that morning, you know, we talked about his wife had that dream and he's like, that has to be in the back of his mind. In verse nine, Jesus' origin was frequently an issue of his opponents. For John, there were clear spiritual overtones to Pilate's question. Where are you from? So Jesus' silence before Pilate is reminiscent of Isaiah 53, seven. Y'all, we're gonna see so much of scripture backing up with scripture. It is just so amazing to me. Um, so verses 10 and 11, this just refers to from above to refer to God. Um, and verses 12, so from this point, like from that moment, Pilate made every effort to release him. But the Jews shouted, if you release this man, oh, sorry, I'm going to, sorry, verse 12 through 16. Um, so, but from the Jews shouted, if you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Anyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside. He sat down on the judge's bench in a place called the Stone Pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was the preparation day for the Passover, and it was about six in the morning. Then he told the Jews, here is your king. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to him, should I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar. The chief priest answered, let us sit. The chief priest answered, we have no king but Caesar. Um, so then, because of them, he handed over to be crucified. Therefore, they took Jesus away. And so verse 12, unconvinced of Jesus' guilt, Pilate sentenced them to die only after intense Jewish pressure. Caesar, originally the surname of Gaius um, Julius Caesar, became the title of the subsequent Roman emperors. Caesar's friend was a semi-formal status. Um, and so, like, this is just saying who Caesar is. He is, like, the person favored by the emperor. So. Um, verses 13, by some accounts, Pilate was an unremarkable man who only had his position because he married the granddaughter of the emperor, holding his position only by relationship. Pilate would be greatly concerned that the relationship was damaged. The religious leader in the crowd knew Pilate's weak point and they pressed upon it. They were so savage, so evil. <laughs> they were just plain evil. And it's just crazy to me. Oh, it's just crazy. So verses 14, the preparation day for the Passover may refer to the day before the Sabbath of the Passover week. If so, all four Gospels concur that Jesus' Last Supper was a Passover meal eaten on Thursday evening, which by Jewish reckoning was the beginning on Friday. Okay, y'all, let this sink in because I have never seen this before until studying this this time. Um, so about the sixth hour, this introduces a point of some controversy because Mark states at the crucifixion at the third hour. If you go back to those four Gospels that I talked about, I talked about this a lot, um, that video. I put the YouTube um, thing up so y'all can see all of the old videos on YouTube. It's a lot easier than Facebook. Um, several attempts have been made to reconcile. Um, so if you look at John like 19.14 and then Mark 15.25. Um, and so that's just saying, if you go back there, I talked a lot about the differences on that. Okay, so verse 15, y'all, this is so cool. By professing to acknowledge Caesar alone as their king, the Jewish leaders betrayed their national heritage and denied their own messianic expectations based on the promise of scripture. Okay, let this sink in. Do you see this? This is them allowing hate to rule over them so much that they betrayed God. They were priests. They were Pharisees, y'all. Let this sink in. They, this is such a sad, sad thing to me. And it's horrible. And sadly, I see it in people now. Do you know people like this? Um, and I mean, even at times, you know, do you have such a hate for somebody at times? I know I have in the past, especially. I feel like God really has, I want to hope. <laughs> God has um, worked in my heart, and I think Jesus Jail, I've talked about Jesus Jail a lot. I think that's helped me a lot with that, um, but you see people, and I mean, think of Ruth, um, not Ruth, sorry, Esther, Haman, and Mordecai, and the hate. Do you see that? That is how Satan kind of puts that seed in, and he allows that hate so much that through that hate, we let people, I mean, like, it is just sad to me how just hating because of, like, one thing, hate should not happen. But if it does, we shouldn't let it resonate in our hearts and our mind. We need to repent of it and turn from that and ask God to check our hearts. But see, the Pharisees, they denied God. That, that's how much they hated Jesus. This is so crazy. I've never noticed this before. I've never noticed that they denied God. No one is worth denying God for. No one. No one. Um, and so they, 
so they here they are that it's just crazy they are the victim and god allowed it to happen i hate that like i just hate that like i hate that um that's how people are like i see that in my notes i have that so like people and then also think of like they are victims so whenever something bad happens you know you hear things like they're the victim and god allowed it to happen so i hate the hurt and the evils of this world um, and so they end up turning from God because of that one thing that had happened and we can allow that. And there is, I mean, I, I can look back at my life and there's a lot of things that happened that I think, man, it, I could have went down that other road. Praise God for grace and for God intervening. Um, but sometimes we allow that hate even towards God, um, change us and make us come away from the Lord. Um, I actually was listening to the radio the other day and, um, Way FM. I don't know if y'all have Way FM where y'all are, but on the Way FM they asked if you know how why have you turned away from God? You know, is there something that had happened? And the stories were tragic and crazy and so bad. And some of them turned away from God and they they don't have anything to do with him. But some of them were like like one lady even to the point got raped and I can't imagine. And she said, you know, I hate that it happened to me. And y'all get chills just thinking of this. And she said, but I, that is what God used for me to come to know him. And so if it meant that I had to have that happen, I can't be in that place. I don't think I could be in that place. But there is a part where we we can go through something and we can say, I will turn away from God. But then we can go through something and we can say, but God never left me nor forsake me. And if he hates it too. And I think that's the one thing that we need to see is that Jesus wept and that those things hurt him as well. And this, even this time right here where he's on the, he's going through scourging and everything. Those, those were pain, even though he was God, those still hurt. That was still painful. Um, but yet he did it because he loves us. And so what he wants is for us to come to him and release those hurts to him. Um, but you see, I think pride ruled over the Pharisees and I, they, I think, thought uh, they were so powerful in a way, like unstoppable. And I'm sure when Jesus was on the cross, they felt that pride was like, oh, look at, I did that. And, but like, what's so cool is they don't know it's going to happen three days later. And we do. So we get to read this with this eyes of knowing what's going on. So, um, man, there's, this is deep, y'all. This is so deep. And, um, man, it is. It is, this is why it's been hard. It was hard. I had this lesson twice. That's why it was so hard, I think. Um, verses 17 through 19, carrying his own cross, he went out to what is called Skull Place, which is Hebrew is called Golgotha. And y'all, I'm going to show you pictures of this. Um, they, there they were crucified him and two others with him on, on either side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had a sign lettered and put on the cross. The inscription was Jesus the Nazarene, the king of the Jews. Um, so Golgotha. So when we are in Israel, um, they think this is Golgotha, but they can't say for sure because um, they can't. I don't know why they can't, but they did. But the reason why they think it is Golgotha is because Golgotha is the place of the skulls, or like I think that's what it was called, this the place of the skulls. Well, this. So this is a picture right here so this is what they think of this the skull so this is actually where it looks like right now when we were there last summer so if you see it kind of looks like a skull and that's why they think that this is it so there's the tomb so they they think that this is the tomb this they can't say for sure that this is the tomb but this may be um so okay there's the tomb okay that's the tomb so we got to actually see that they don't let you go in but right there they think that's the tomb now y'all this is just what they think in israel and this is actually a place that you can go to and um and see it so it was kind of humbling to know that that this is it but um i'm trying to see yeah so but that's like that because it's changed a little bit this was like i think 30 years ago but then something had happened and it changed a little but that may be that, that maybe where all this took place um isn't that amazing, y'all? I mean, like, it's just so crazy. Okay, so let's see here. Stacy, you say they had a card at his funeral for people to take with a picture of my brother on the front and his birthday and the date he passed. On the back was a character, a man of great character whose judgment, humor, and friendly spirit brought out the finest in those around him. 
the influence of his life upon others is a flame that will burn brightly forever. He left so much good in every soul he touched on this earth. Wow, like Stacy, that has to be so comforting just to know that. Um, and just knowing that they, that he was loved and he made that much of an impact. Um, okay, so let me see where I was at. Okay, so verse 17. Uh, Jesus set out carrying his own cross until he collapsed. Simon of Cyrene was then pressed into service and he carried it into execution site. You can go back to Matthew 27, 32. He went out of means of out of the city where Jewish custom prescribed that execution should be take place. Twelve place translate to Galgatha, which I just showed you, um, which is in Latin equivalent to Calvary, which how crazy is that? Um, so carrying his own cross, he or sorry. So the Persians invented crucifixion, but one could say that the Romans perfected it and made it an institution. It was the form of execution reserved for the worst criminals and the lowest classes. Crucifixion was designed to make the victim die publicly, slowly, and great pain and humiliation. This was the form of death God ordained for Jesus to die, and the death that he submitted to in the will of God. We serve an amazing God, y'all. We just do. Um, man, I just, it's like to really, to really look at this and just to see that he went through all this. Um, so verse 18 on crucifixion, um, so Jesus' crucifixion between two criminals is reminiscent of Psalm 22:16. This is so cool, y'all. I'm gonna I'm gonna read this psalm to y'all, but let me read. It's also if you go to Isaiah 52:13. Therefore, I will give him the many as a portion, and he will receive the mighty as spoil, because he submitted himself to death and was counted among the rebels. Yet he bore the sin of many and interceded for the rebels. Okay, so look at that. That is prophesying Jesus. He's saying those rebels were the two. I mean, like, two, this is crazy. Like, it's so crazy. And then Psalm twenty-two, sixteen: 16, for dogs have surrounded me. A gang of evildoers has closed in on me. They pierced my hands and my feet. They pierced my hands and my feet. I mean, you can't really look at that and say, that's not Jesus. That's not what happened on the cross. This, this is just so crazy. And so, and think about Isaiah. That was written 700 years before Jesus stepped on this earth 700 years before and he wrote that like and there's so much in Isaiah so like I can't imagine reading Isaiah and thinking yeah Jesus doesn't exist I just can't um but verse 19 Jesus was centered among humanity Jesus never distanced himself from common men and freely interacted with those thought to be great men from his incarnation through his whole life he lived as one of us Jesus died among men and women, Jews and Gentiles, rich and poor, high class and no class, the educated and the uneducated, the religious and the secular, the guilty and the innocent, the weepers and the mockers, those deeply moved and those indifferent, those who hated him and those who loved him. Y'all think about that. Those who hated him, those who mocked him, those people who just spit on him, that slapped his feet, that scourged him, all of those people he went to the cross for. I mean, like, I can't even fathom that kind of love. And yet he did. I mean, oh, it's just so amazing. So verse 20 through 24, many of the Jews read this sign because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew. Um, Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. Okay, just remember that. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, don't write the king of the Jews, but they that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate replied, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into the four parts, a part for each soldier. They also took the tunic, which was seamless, seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who gets it. They did this to fulfill the scripture that says they divided my clothes among themselves and they cast lots for my clothing. And this is what the soldiers did. Ah, this is so cool. So verse 20, um, I never, I never knew this. So like, this is really this. Oh, did I write it? Oh, I didn't write them on the notes. So I wish I would have written it down. I bet I do. I bet I have some notes on that later in the thing. I probably copied and pasted it like from lot. So 21, finally, Pilate is going to stand up for Jesus. Like, but you can't get mad at him because this had to happen. <laughs> so I kept on telling myself while I was reading this. Um, so in that, what the letters mean that are on the cross, I-N-R-I. Oh, I, oh, Cindy, what was that? 
Um, I will let you know on that because I have actually studied that. So I don't know where my notes are on that. I will, I'm going to look that up though. I will, I will put that in and um, I'll reply to you on that because I did have something on that. Um, so verses 23, maybe my notes are in here. Um, So similar, so the seamless, the tunic may recall Joseph's robe in Gen, or Genesis 37, 3 and 23, similar to several later events in the crucifixion. The soldiers' division of Jesus' clothes and their casting of lots fulfilled scripture. And that's Psalm 22, 18. On the other fulfillment quotations, uh, we can go back to John 12, which we talked about that. So verse 24, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just skipping ahead because I'm excited. Um, verse 23 Okay, so scripture prophesying Jesus' death, this shows that Jesus came all the way down the ladder to accomplish our salvation. He let go of everything, even his last bit of clothing, became completely poor for us, that we could become completely rich in him. 2 Corinthians 8, 9 says it like this, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that, that you through his poverty might become rich. Isn't that awesome, y'all? This is scripture back in the scripture, and I love this. I absolutely love this because Jesus, he can relate to anybody. This is just saying there is no one that he cannot relate to. Um, so verses 24, Psalm 22, a, a lament psalm ascribed to David, is the most frequently quoted psalm in the New Testament. There's some Bible trivia for you. This is the first of several references to Jesus as the righteous sufferer in keeping with the experience of the psalmist. The soldiers did did not want to tear Jesus' tunic because it was woven, woven on, of one cloth. G, John may have purposely shaped his account of Jesus' crucifixion in a way that highlighted the parallels and fulfillment between the experiences of David and Jesus. For instance, Psalm 22, 15 through 18 mentions the sufferer's thirst, his pierced hands and feet in verse 16, and the preservation preservation of all his bones. So we're going to read Psalm 22 because I just think it's just so vile. Um, for this, I mean, we can't not read it because like, this is what's so cool about like the old Testament and the new Testament. Like David wrote this y'all so many years before this and listen to this. I mean, just think of the cross. Whenever you hear this, that we, we actually went to like this thing called with Leonard sweet and he like took this and he just dissected it to the cross and it was amazing. Um, but just listen to this. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from my deliverance and from my words of groaning? My God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. By night, I have no rest, but you are holy and thrown on the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in you. They trusted in you, rescued them. They cried to you and were set free. They trusted in you and you were not disgraced. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by people. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads. He relies on the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let the Lord deliver him, since he takes pleasure in him. Remember, remember the Pharisees have been saying that to Jesus all throughout. Like, I mean, this is so prophetic. You took me from the womb, making me secure. While at my mother's breast, I was given over to you at birth. You have been my God for my mother's womb. Do not be far from me because the stress is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong ones of fashion encircle me. They open their mouths against me, lions, mauling and roaring. I am poured out like water and my bones are disjointed. My heart is like wax melting within me. My strength is dried up like baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You put it into the dust of death for dogs have surrounded me. A gang of evil doers have closed in on me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People look and stare at me. They divided my garments among themselves, and they cast lots for my clothing. But you, Lord, don't be far away from my strength and come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword, my only life from the power of these dogs. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You rescue me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will proclaim your name to my brothers. I will praise you in the congregation. You who fear Yahweh, praise him. All the descendants of Jacob honor him. All you descendants of Israel, revere him. They remember that as well. For he has not despised or detested the torment of his affliction. He did not hide his face from him, but listened when he cried to him for help. I will give praise in the great congregation because of you. I will fulfill my vows 
before those who fear you. The humble will eat and will be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May the hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations will bow down before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. Who prosper on earth and will eat and bow down. All those who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Even the one who cannot preserve his life. Their descendants will serve him. The next generation will be told about the Lord. They will come and tell people yet to be born about this righteousness that he has done. Oh my goodness, y'all. Could that be more prophetic? I mean, look at that. That is amazing to me how prophetic that is. Um, I just, I don't know. To me, that is just like the coolest. So standing, verses 25 through 27, standing by the cross on Jesus where his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, Clopas and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother and his disciples, he loved, he loved standing there. He said to his mother, women, woman, here's your son. Then he said to the disciples, here's your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. So verses 26 through 27, um, this is just kind of Jesus going in with Deuteronomy 5, 16 and Exodus 20, 12. Jesus made provision for his mother, who was almost certainly widowed and probably in her early 50s with little or no personal income on the, so like to me, I always wondered where James is on this. I don't know, <laughs> but um, James obviously, um, he may not be old enough. I don't know. Um, Christy, you say, I think it means Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The letter is interchangeable with the letter J. Okay, so there you go, Cindy. Like, thank you, Christy, like awesome. Um, so verses 28 through 30, after this, when Jesus knew that everything was now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I'm thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was sitting there. So they fixed a sponge full of sour wine on his up and held it up into his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. Then bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. So verses 28 through 29, um, the reference of scripture being fulfilled builds on the verse 24. Most likely an allusion to Psalm 69, 21, they gave me vinegar to drink. Soldiers and laborers use sour wine to quench their thirst. It is a different from the wine mixed with myrrh. Jesus refused on the way to the cross. So Jesus refused that. But here it's um, hyssop was a plant classifying in 1 Kings 4, 33. Um, so it's just, again, like it's just scripture, like being prof prophetic, like these little details we're all prophesied, which is so crazy. I mean, God is in the details. He is in all the details, y'all. Don't think that there's something that he's not in detail of. Um, and, okay, the very mention of hyssop would take the thoughts of any Jew back to the saving blood of the Passover lamb. So that's what's so cool about verse 29. That goes back to the Passover lamb. And all the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they knew this, which is crazy. Um, so verses 30 um, oh, and y'all, I keep on forgetting to say this, but y'all, I want to pretend y'all are at my table. I'm actually at my dining room table, or my, yeah, my dining room table today because my dishwasher was going. Please comment. Like, I know we're 38 minutes in, but in the future, always comment. Let me know what y'all are thinking and everything because I want to edit like you are around my table. Um, so verse 30, gave, um, so gave up, may echo, submitted himself to death, which was prophesied in the suffering servant in Isaiah 53. Um, again. Prophecy. So a single word can change everything. Not guilty in a court of law changes everything. Fair on the playing field changes everything. When a woman says yes to a marriage proposal, it changes everything. Goodbye can change everything. Yet there has never been a single word said that has impacted history than what Jesus said in John 1930. And so, oh my goodness. So let's just read that again. It is finished. Y'all, just like, let that sink in. That is the, one of the most important things that we need to know as Christians. Um, so cool. So verses 31 through 37, I have like six minutes. I had to go through this. Um, since, it has, since it was preparation day, the Jews did not want the bodies to remain on the cross on the Sabbath. So the Sabbath was a special day. They requested the pilot have the men's legs broken and their bodies be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man and of the other one who had been crucified with him. When they came to Jesus, they did not break his legs since they saw that he was already dead. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true and he knows he is telling the truth. 
For these things happen so that scripture would be fulfilled. Now one of his bones will be broken. Also another scripture says they will look at the one they pierced. So verses 31, um, on the preparation day, the Sabbath was special because it was the Sabbath of Passover to defile the land by remaining on the tree overnight. Oops, sorry, for the Jews' bodies up. Uh, bodies of hanged criminals were not defi to defile the land by remaining on it. Okay, is there a coincidence that this is happening when it is? I mean, there is no coincidence with God. Like he, like there is no coincidence. I mean, he had everything lined up to fulfill pro prophecy. Everything, y'all. This is so amazing to me. I mean, like, does that not excite you to know that he, he like, this is so cool. Um, I just think I've never thought of the timing of this. I've never looked and thought the timing of this was so implacable. I mean, it was so important to be at this time. So many times the Sadducees and Pharisees had Jesus penned, but yet he always escaped because it had to be this time because it had to fulfill prophecy. This is so amazing. Um, so the length of crucifixion victims were broken to hasten death. This prevented them from pushing themselves up with their legs to be open the chest cavity and thus breathe better. Since the victims would not have to pull themselves up by the arms instead, suffocating occurred once their arms and strength failed. So just think of that. Um, just think of that. Like they, that's why they would, if they weren't dead, they would break their bones on their legs and then they would collapse and then they would stop being able to breathe. Um, so that's why they broke their legs. Well, Jesus was already dead. So um it's just crazy to me. So verses 34, this reminded me of my, my older child, Alexis. Um, gosh, Gospel of John movie. I don't know if y'all have ever seen it, but it's word for word, the gospel. We went and saw that. We had actually had to drive to Nashville to go see it in the movies. I went with two of my friends and, and Alexis went along with me. Um, and she, gosh, she was probably five, five or she was probably five. She was five when it came out. And we were at the movies. And in the middle of the movie, there's only like six people there. <laughs> it was like me and my two friends and Alexis and another couple. Um, and this, this scene was on and it said, like the narrator said, um, so that, or right before the narrator said, not when it, or this should fulfill prophecy. They, the, the movie, if I'm not mistaken, the movie had the person to go back to go hit Jesus's legs. But then like right where he did that, Alexis, <laughs> Alexis was like, no, no bone should break. And I just looked at her and I was like, how did she know that? Like, <laughs> she might actually listen to our little devotional times. Um, so it was just really cool. And I always think of her whenever I see this scripture because my little five-year-old daughter, you know, gets up and she's like, no, it says no bone should break. And then right after she said that, the narrator of the movie said not to verses 36. So that was just really it always reminds me of her and that and her little self. Um, now she's going to be 21, which is bad. Um, so verse 36, after verses 24 and 28 through 29, this is the third scriptural proof that shows that Jesus is death fulfilled scripture. And you can go back to Exodus 12, 46 and Psalm 34, 20. Y'all, do you see all this scripture? I mean, do you see all of this Old Testament scripture? Jesus escaped having his legs broken since he died so quickly and the spirit did not damage any of his bones. And so verses 37, I'm going to go ahead and end with this, and then we'll just start with 38 next week because um, it is almost 45 minutes, and I need to go pick my little one up. And actually, yeah, let me do that, and that way we can just finish it um, next week. So verses 37, the Roman soldiers again fulfilled prophecy without knowing it. They will look at me whom they pierced, and that's chapter 12, 10. And it's also um, cited in Revelation 1-7. Y'all think of that. Like, they were fulfilling scripture. Everything that they did, they thought, remember, they thought they had all this power, but yet they didn't. Like, this just shows how we should not be prideful. Like, this just shows that we aren't in control. This should show how we should just trust in God, that he has everything set and lined up um, because he is a good father. and he. And he has purpose to everything. And so, um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and end with that. So I can pray us out. But y'all, thank you for joining. Like this, I'm telling you, this this chapter was, it's just a hard chapter. It was just hard. So I just appreciate y'all so much for joining. Um, I would love some interaction next week. Um, I haven't read ahead, but it's, 
going to be a good one. Oh, it's the empty tomb. This is like the excitement of our faith. So let me go ahead and pray us out. I hope you all have a fabulous Valentine's Day. I'll just know and remember, like, Jesus' love is the perfect love. We can't have the expectations of our spouse, of our kids, of our parents, or of anyone to fulfill that love in us. It has to be from the Lord. Um, and I know that's hard sometimes. Um, because sometimes he may seem silent, but he's not. And I think that's why, you know, you go back and you read this chapter and he's not silent. He did this for you. He loves you. And so if you ever doubt his love, go back to chapter 19. Just remember his love. Y'all, he loved us that much. He endured all that pain and suffering for, for us and for the father. And so that's just saying we should love him and the father. Lord, we thank you so much for the guy that you are. Lord, it hurts to know you went through all this pain and suffering but Lord, it's so easy for me to read it personally and say, oh, but we have the empty tomb and we have the resurrection, but I don't want to ever look past with the pain and suffering that you went through because that just shows the, the grace and the mercy that you give us and the love that you have for us, Lord. We just thank you. We thank you for that. We thank you that in the hardship, I know, um, especially with Crystal and Stacy that are going through these, um, just the pain and the hurt, Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you just reveal yourself more and more to us, Lord. Reveal yourself, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit just dwell in us and let us tell others about you, Lord. Let us not take your word for granted by no means, but let us let it ponder in our hearts and our minds and let it just remind us and re let us remember it, Lord. We just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, have a fabulous, fabulous day um, and I will see you next week. Oh, y'all are so welcome. Um, I and I do appreciate y'all like this this group y'all do not know how special y'all are to my heart so I thank y'all so much for joining and have a great week